Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be going over angling in War Thunder and how to most effectively use it to protect yourself and come out on top in each fight. I'll give an overview of angling, including what it is, how to use it, and when you need to use it, and also provide examples via gameplay to illustrate my points. I'll be using in-game assets as the tool to explain everything so that you will have the clearest point of reference possible in regards to how this relates to War Thunder. That said, join our channel's Discord if you'd like, and also if you'd like, subscribe to my channel. But that said, without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start off with the theory or overview of angling. First, what it is. Angling is the act of positioning your vehicle in such a way that it will be more likely to induce a ricochet or non-pen of some kind as the result of being hit by an enemy projectile. Angling both increases effective armor and the likelihood of a ricochet. In fact, if you angle correctly or just get really lucky, you can have shots deflect off your R3 T20 or T114. Unfortunately, this has only happened against me and I coincidentally turned that shot into a meme video which is linked below. With the overview for what angling is out of the way, I'd like to also point out seven general rules and ideas about angling that I thought would be important to expand upon in this video. Some of these I may have mentioned earlier in the intro, but I'll go into much more detail now, as well as mention new things. So number one, if you angle, not only will you have a higher chance to bounce a shot, but it will also make your armor thicker at that angle. This increased armor is called effective armor, or effective thickness, depending on your preference. It's one of the reasons why, despite only having four 45 millimeters of upper glacis armor, the first T-34s that are researchable in War Thunder can be very difficult to kill from the front, especially if those T-34s are not facing you directly. That 45 millimeters of armor will typically always be 70 millimeters plus due to the incline slope design of its frontal armor. If the driver of the tank angles it properly, you can easily see 100 plus millimeters of armor, which is potentially equal to or greater than that of a Tiger one when it's not angled or even slightly angled. All of that armor and the base T-34 sit at 3.3 and 3.7 BR. Number two, when combined with knowledge of your tank's weak spots, angling can take you from losing your tank early and often in matches to this becoming a rare occurrence. Once you know not only where to protect, but also how to make more effective use of your tank's armor, you should see an increase in survival time plus how well you do in a match. Oftentimes, this improvement is extremely substantial. Angling your armor is one of the foundational skills in War Thunder ground forces. Once you get good at it, you'll be much, much tougher to defeat. Number three, a technique derived from angling, something that I call side skirting, though I'm sure other people call it other things, is when you'd make the angle of the side of your tank such that it essentially runs parallel to the shell that's coming towards you. This typically is by happenstance and is not something that you can always control, but if you can move your tank in such a way that the shell hits the side of your tank at a very shallow angle, you should be able to make it ricochet without issue. This skill is especially useful on German medium and heavy World War II tanks as they have long areas of flat and weak side armor. Number four, don't worry if angling does not always work. It won't. Almost every tank in every BR in-game has frontal armor that can be defeated by another tank within one BR of it, regardless of angle. If you can be defeated from the front while at an angle, don't stop angling. All this sometimes takes is another few degrees to turn a shot from a kill shot against you to either a bounce or a non-pen due to thicker effective armor. Additionally, if someone that you don't see hits you from the side, it happens and will continue to happen almost every time you hop into ground forces. Again, this is not something that should stop you from angling and doesn't mean that angling does not work. A good way to determine if you're at a good angle when fighting an enemy tank is to judge where your cannon barrel is in relation to your tank tracks. The closer that you are to being right above the very front of your tank tracks, typically the better angle that you have with most tanks. Once you go over that invisible line and your cannon barrel is starting to get more towards the side of your tank, you'll be at a poor angle and will likely have your sides easily penned. Unless you're in a tank where the treads go substantially beyond the main body of the tank, like in the M6A1, this rule typically applies. Additionally, if you are fighting two enemies at once, try to find the best angle in between the two of them. If you can't, or if one of the enemies has a substantially better cannon, angle more so that the more powerful enemy will have a more difficult time penning your tank. Number five, this one is simple, well known, and actually achievable now that war bonds are fairly available to most people. Adding foliage can not only obscure weak spots, but can make it so that enemies are more likely to ricochet rounds off of you while you angle properly. Again, due to them not knowing exactly where to hit. 
Number six, if you over angle, it could lead to you overexposing your side armor, which in turn will make it far easier to hit you. Though it is certainly tempting to highly angle your front armor, I would say it is safest to do so at around five to 25 or even 30 degrees, unless you have your flanks protected by cover, at which point you might be able to go a little bit more angular than that. The degrees I came up with are more or less my best approximation, but you'll get a good feel for each tank's prime angling range as you play them being that every tank has slightly different needs and requirements and all that that would make their angle maybe a little bit better at 20 degrees than one might be at 10 or whatever the case may be just figure out what your prime angling range is and you'll do well with your tank and finally, angling is probably most effective from reserve through early Cold War tanks, but can be used all the way up through top tier. You can ricochet Sabo, HeatFS, and APF SDS ammunition, just like you might be able to ricochet AP, APHE, APCR, and so forth. The only types of shells that don't typically ricochet are HE and HESH ammunition, the latter of which can be a bit of an issue, sometimes at least, being that it works very well when hitting at shallow angles, making it so that the shell that would otherwise have ricocheted might might now pen. These are relatively uncommon shells, however, as most tanks that have them will tend to use other shells, unless of course it's the Centurion ARVE, in which case, good luck. So to now kind of relate everything I was just telling you into more something practical or something that even you could repeat yourself, I'm going to use the classic case of the Tiger H1, probably the most common Tiger and probably the tank that everyone will always refer to when talking about angling. And also, I do have a Tiger 1 guide linked below and a Panther guide also if you want, linked below. Both of them have done fairly well when it comes to views and uh, I guess they're pretty popular, at least relative to my videos. But that being said, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what I meant before, uh, more or less, when you have a tank like this, it's just not going to be very good from the front so you have the 102 millimeters give or take of about armor if you're looking at it more or less head-on if you see a tiger doing this just shoot it wherever you can right here in the front and it will likely die and the reason being is because that is an inexperienced tiger player or just an unlucky tiger player now if you kind of move over here it doesn't go up by too much, but it goes up by around 28 uh, millimeters. And, you know, of course, it kind of depends the closer you get to the edge. Uh, I guess the closest edge to you, the less armor effectively it has, whereas the further away you get, the more armor effectively has. And one interesting thing is, is that when it comes to the impact angle, let's say if you were to hit this at an eight degree angle, you have 103 millimeters of armor. Now, all of a sudden you hit it at a 14 degree angle. It only goes up by two millimeters. You put it up by about another five or six. It doesn't go up by too much more, but you start going up. And with each degree that you go up from here on out, really, it starts increasing by a substantial margin. The reason being is just, again, based on the illustrations I had shown you before, uh, you will start to see uh, it, it's almost like you're kind of at this point, not not entirely, of course, but obviously if you shoot the tank from here, it doesn't really model it well. Uh, it just reads as 82 millimeters, but you're going to have to shoot through this entire brick, more or less, of steel. Whereas, you know, if you're shooting like this, either it will likely ricochet, or you'll have to go through much more steel before it can actually get into the cabin. Now you have some specialized ammunition, even at 5.3, that can possibly make it through, but that's not really necessarily going to be likely. Now, that being said, uh, one other thing that I was mentioning was when it comes to the gun where you should kind of be pointing it And let's say if you have a guy like right here, right? So that's more or less kind of right above where the track is the tread is and uh, So you're going to be angling it more or less here now. This is a fairly safe angle. It's not anything too crazy It's fairly safe now. You see you have about 124 millimeters 115 137 it it increases your armor, not by a ton, but by a little bit. And you'll be just a little bit over that. So, and more what I meant was not not so much like, hey, if you face your cannon towards an enemy, you're automatically uh, going to be uh, angled, but more so that's just kind of, if your tank is facing straight and then you turn to face an enemy here, obviously it's going to be at an angle. Now, the more that you 
put it like let's say at this angle now all of a sudden this might look really good right 160 millimeters right in the middle 140 right on the side probably 180 right there pretty good the thing is now all of a sudden because you're over angled you start to expose your sides so you have 130 right here 137 right here this is about the maximum at least when it comes to the tiger tank that you're going to want to angle your your vehicle because more or less you have about equivalent armor here and here that's probably around a 40 45 degree angle i wouldn't really do it much more than that because if you're looking to increase your frontal armor of course again with each degree it goes up substantially now all of a sudden you only have 120 millimeters here and guess what's behind the long flat side armor of a tiger tank that's right ammunition bodies crew not a good look you're not going to want to do that and uh you know you really really want to make sure that you're not going to expose yourself too much uh just because ultimately what happens is you'll end up putting the more vulnerable spots of your tank on more full display display by by uh more highly angling and one thing that I mentioned before, actually, let's get right back into the Tiger one here. Last part of about this portion of the video, uh, side skirting. So if I didn't show it in the video up to now, what I meant by side skirting is more or less just kind of hitting it like this. Um, you know, you might be exposing your, your frontal armor a little bit more, but if you suspect that someone's about to try to shoot the side of your tank, like let's say if you're like this, right? Like you have a pretty good amount of your side armor exposed and they're going to shoot you, try to just put it just enough where it's just like hey look you know where it's just substantially thicker make that last second turn and then you'll have much much better armor there and a lot of the time people will go for side armor regardless of how it's angled so obviously if you do a protection analysis here you shoot it here i mean this is more or less primo side skirting it's just it's going to ricochet regardless of how poor the armor is um well two millimeters okay but um more or less again side skirting very important it's kind of like we're it's kind of like angling but on the opposite end of the spectrum so to speak um it's more it more has to do with quick tactical maneuvering rather than more of a uh, a planned sort of angle you know it's more based on the situation you're in rather than just angling what you're going to be doing in general anyways Ultimately, as stated before, angling is relative to the vehicle that you're using. As mentioned before, different tanks have different prime angling angles, so to speak, which will lead to a diversity in playstyle when trying to figure out what works best specifically with the tank that you're using. This guide, however, was meant to show the importance of angling, as well as give you a basic idea of how it's done, and also to a point how it works. With all that being said, that about ends the video. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, comment, subscribe, you know the dealio. But either way, thanks again, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.